This is Melville DeMello speaking to you from the ramparts of the Red Fort in uh, New Delhi. Now, if rain is auspicious, then this nation is thrice blessed because it's pouring heavily here, and uh, below me is a sea of mushroom umbrellas, and on the ramparts themselves, members of the court diplomatic, you can barely recognize them because it's just umbrellas, umbrellas, and umbrellas. Everything is squelching. Everything is very, very wet indeed. The flags and everything is blurred by rain, the distant monuments and the landmarks. And here we are to celebrate the 19th anniversary of the country's independence. Outside, standing on the green grass, 200 strong guard of honor, Army, Navy, Air Force, and police. 14 buglers positioned in the main minaret of the Red Fort heralded the march on as they sounded the fall-in and the advance. Now they are waiting for the Prime Minister, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, to arrive. The Guard of Honor comprises 50 men each from the three services of the Delhi police, and uh, uh, they marched on the Maidan to the west of the fort, swinging their arms to the martial notes of uh, the march called Air Battle. The Guard of Honor is under the overall command of Lieutenant Colonel M.K. Menon of the Grenadiers. The Army contingent is commanded by Major M.S. Raza. The Naval contingent by Lieutenant Commander Murthy. The Air Force by Squadron Leader Jaffa and the police by D. Kashyap, Superintendent of Police. Uh, the Air Force Band uh, is in attendance this morning. Now, the Prime Minister visits Rajgat first and is due to arrive here at 7.15 at uh, the um, Lahore Gate. Her car is escorted to Rajgat by 10 motorcyclists. As I said, she will alight outside the Lahore Gate the way she will be met by the Defense Minister, Mr. Chawan, the Mayor of Delhi, Sri Nuruddin Ahmed, and the GOC Delhi area, Major General Rajwade. Now, all eyes are now on the Lahore Gate. The GOC will conduct the Prime Minister to, to the saluting days. Uh, the Guard of Honor will then give a general salute. Uh, the inspection music will be Rajasthan, the slow march. When the inspection is over, the Prime Minister will uh, walk up to the ramparts and unfurl the national flag. That should be at 7.30 a.m. As the flag is unfurled, the Guard of Honor will give a general salute. The IAF band will play Jan Gun Man and a field battery, six guns, fires a 31-gun salute. They are in position uh, within about 25 yards of the Delhi Gate of the Red Fort. Now, the Guard of Honor will then march off, and uh, 1,500 school children from 20 schools in Delhi will move into the space vacated by the Guard of Honor. Uh, 25 blind girls will be taking part in this morning's function and uh, a group of AIR artists together with 1,500 school children will sing the national anthem which will mark the end of the ceremony. By uh, 8 a.m. the Prime Minister is expected to depart. Also taking part are 5,000 cadets of the senior and junior divisions of the NCC, uh, boys and girls. Now this is the first ceremony to be televised by All India Radio. And uh, as I sit here now in my leaking commentator's box, I can see the cameras there still covered with their waterproof. Now, this is the first time Mrs. Gandhi will address an Independence Day gathering. Her father spoke from here many, many times in sunshine and in rain. Mr. Shastri once, and that was a thunder shower, very much like this, a portent perhaps of the turbulent days that were to follow. Days he met with a will of steel. Now, the dominant mood here is affection and warmth, for it's here that the people come face to face with the leader. No matter what the difficulties are, how hard the times, today all is forgotten in a, a cloudburst, I wouldn't say sunburst this time, but a cloudburst of pride as the national flag is unfurled from the ramparts of one of the most beautiful monuments in the world. Now, these moments are charged with emotion as uh, this flag here on the ramparts is unfurled to the thunder of guns and the strains of the national anthem. And as the Prime Minister pulls on the ripcord and the flag starches, uh, she will be very close to her people today. We are reminded as we sit here also of Subhash Chandra Bose and his battle cry, Delhi Chalo, and the yearning that he inculcated in his followers to run up the Indian tricolor from these very ramparts. Now, this simple ceremony has become, I think, the most comprehensible assertion of our sovereignty. All eyes are now on Lahore Gate, and we can hear the rumble of the outriders, and any moment now, the Prime Minister should be emerging around the corner of the fort. Now, today, she will stand on the spot consecrated for years by her father, Jawaharlal Nehru. 
this day is her day for by tradition this is the prime minister's day and this is her first public appearance on an occasion of national importance and here is mrs indira gandhi walking just beyond the moat now uh, in the arena which is below the red fort in a waterproof accompanied by general rajwade there's nothing on her head and uh, she is doing a pranam as the crowds pick up and a great she pick up a great cheer for her as she does pranam and moves at a very brisk rate now with general rajwade down towards the saluting base and you can probably hear the crowds now in the background as they burst out they're in a grand mood in spite of the inclement weather and uh, you can hear the cheering now she's walking very briskly towards the saluting days on her left Major General Rajwale, GOC Delhi and Rajasthan area. Uh, these crowds uh, cannot be suppressed even though it's a very dull day and everything here, the monuments, everything is blurred. The Siskan Gurdwara and the Jama Masjid, all the famous landmarks are blurred by rain. Lampposts are blurred by rain. The roads are blurred by rain. Everything is blurred by rain. And now Mrs. Gandhi is on the saluting days. Here goes the present. of honor is now standing at present arms and in a moment they will slope they come down to the ordered arms and lieutenant colonel menon very smartly goes forward a very tall officer and gives a salute to her the prime minister mrs indira gandhi and invites her to inspect the guard of honor she's standing there bolt upright on the scarlet covered desk now she walks down slowly very businesslike raises her right hand in salute acknowledges the salute and she begins her inspection very briskly she walks down to the front rank of the army, which from here is on the left of the line, but is actually in uh, army parlance on the right of the line. Now she walks straight down with Lieutenant Colonel Menon, wheels right, and she begins her inspection, a very business-like walk. I can just see through the gap of the water that she's wearing a white sari, as Rajasthan in so much is played as Mrs. Gandhi now inspects the front rank of the Guard of Honor. And now approaching the naval contingent, all dressed in white. Now this great sandstone complex is not just stone and mortar. It's the embodiment of the joys and sorrows and inspirations of our nation. The wind and the rain and the years failed to whipsaw these massive walls, which have been standing here for 318 years. Powerful memories surface as one looks back over one's shoulder, literally and figuratively. Here is history frozen in stone. Jawaharlal Nehru standing here, hand out flung, jaw thrust forward, the red rose, the spotless clothes, the thunder of Jai Hind from the massive clouds below. And today, in a moment, his daughter. Now, inspection over. She's walking back now as a section of the crowd led by the photographers break through and try to reach her. She's walking down now between the moat and the invited audience, which is below the red fort. Very briskly, a very brisk panam as she steps over a pool of water, not in the least bit deterred, a very businesslike walk. A quick pranam as she goes along here, and uh, Major General Rajwade is, uh, in spite of his military stride, is uh, just about keeping up with her. Very brisk walk indeed, in a moment she'll disappear out of sight, and she will then appear on the rampart. So, the torch is passed. So today, Jawaharlal Nehru's daughter will unfurl the flag on the ramparts of the Red Fort. But let's go farther back to the INA trials. When the best legal brains of our country were arrayed on the side of the defense. The first Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, donned his barrister's gown to resume for a brief while the profession he had renounced to serve his country. Ninety years earlier, another trial in the same hall. This time it was the last titular emperor, Bahadur Shah II. He was tried and found guilty and deported to Rangoon. Well, gone are the cannon that squirted steel from here, Gone the gold and silver ceilings, the peacock throne and the precious stones, the noble warriors and the fugitive chiefs, the covered palanquins, the music and the tinkle of silver ankle bells.
There are no moon gardens anymore, no life-giving gardens and streams of paradise and stately elephants. But the shell is still here and the surrounding landmarks are still here. Out in front, Chandni Chak with its own history, sharing the misfortunes of the Red Fort. It was witness to the ghastly procession in which the unfortunate Prince Dara's head was carried. It was from the Sonheri Mosque opposite the fountain that the infuriated Persian Nadir Shah in 1739 ordered a general massacre of the citizens of Delhi. They say blood flowed like water through Chandi Chowk. There was the first war of independence when gallows were erected in the Chowk to publicly hang the leaders. Well, time has scarred the horror over. Today, Chandi Chowk is peaceful, watched over by the 16th century Gauri Shankar Temple, whose spires pierce the skyline like fingers pointing the way. To the center of my position, blurred by the rain, the gilded dome of the Siskan's Gurwara. Normally, it flashes in the sun when the sun does come out on past occasions. To my left, the architectural subtlety of the Jama Masjid, with its ribbed dome, one of the biggest mosques in the world. This morning, blurred by rain and clinging mist. Above the drama of clouds, heavy overcast, and the sun can't escape, not just yet anyway. There's a great surge of people now. Everything is swollen, thrusting, and shifting, except the 12,000 odd invitees who are confined to special enclosures. A vague hum reaches us here on the rampart, and you can probably hear it. And now all eyes are on the ramparts of the Red Fort as we await the arrival of Mrs. Indira Gandhi, the Prime Minister. And as I look out again over this sea of umbrellas, I can see that the crowd is increasing slowly but surely as streams of people literally uh, walking like long lines of mushrooms, uh, long lines of moving mushrooms are working now towards this uh, enclosure here, which uh, overlooks, uh, the, which uh, stands below the ramparts of the Red Fort. There's a flag now up here furled, and Mr. Chauvin is the first to appear on the date, and the uh, scarlet platform behind him, Mrs. Gandhi, the Prime Minister, she does go down to the huge crowd here, as uh, led by Defence Minister Chauvin, she walks down now towards our commentator's box, and is uh, exchanging greetings, Independence Day greetings, with the uh, ambassador, the corps diplomatique, and here she comes now, as all the ambassadors and their wives stand up, a very squelchy stand-up as she's coming down the front row now towards my commentator's box. Smiling hugely, as I said, nothing covering her head at all. Braving the rain, a huge smile for everyone and a handshake, a bow to those in the rear rank, and behind her, Defence Minister Chauvin. Here she comes now, a very elegant lady, a very gracious lady, as she walks down here full of confidence, and uh, she's about... 20 feet now away from the commentator's box as the rain begins to increase its tempo and uh, my box is now truly leaking. She walks down, she's nearer now, 10, 15 feet away, not more than that. A big smile, pronounced to those in the seats in the rear. Now she stops to have a chat with the Burmese ambassador. She does pranam, a long distance pranam to people on the left here. And another big smile, another gracious smile as she walks back slowly, led by Defence Minister Chauvin. And uh, the next view we will get of her in the sea of umbrellas is as she emerges uh, on the um, platform uh, where the flagstaff uh, is. Now, uh, you can probably hear the patter of the rain on the uh, atmosphere microphones which are placed out there. Everything is very green, and the edge of this rampart is edged with uh, Verbalia cypress and uh, Croton, which gives it a very fine look indeed. Everything is very lush and green because of the rain. We've had a very wet August, and uh, I think this is the wettest day of the lot. The storm by storm drains are now squelching forward and belching forward uh, dirty water, which has been carried away by the main drain in the moat. And probably if this goes on for another two or three hours, this moat, which uh, was uh, drained in 1857, I'm told, uh, will probably be full again. I don't know whether that's auspicious or not. Anyway, now we're looking for Mrs. Gandhi. As uh, I can see, uh, the shoulders, head and shoulders of Sub-Lieutenant Swaran Singh Goindi, who will uh, be uh, at the base of the backstop when Mrs. Gandhi pulls 
on the ripcord to unfurl the national flag. Well, they're up here on the um, ramparts, it's quite a, a colorful um, a view. I get through my very wet and dripping commentator's window, very blurred too, uh, almost like an artist's palette because uh, they have colored umbrellas of all descriptions and uh, some were wise to come in waterproofs, others were not so wise. Uh, some have handkerchiefs tied around their heads, but for the most part, they have very, very colorful umbrellas up here on the ramparts. Below the general color is, of course, black, black umbrellas, and uh, here and there punctuated by the odd scarlet or blue. The um, NCC boys, uh, whom I saw assembled there on the green grass, act as a buffer between the main public and the Guard of Honor, of course, today are not looking as colorful because their berries and their uniforms, the colors are all so absolutely soaked with rain with the result that they are not their bright selves. But the other morning they were looking extremely colorful when they came on uh, parade during the rehearsal. Loudspeakers, of course, silver and clean as usual. And uh, what strikes one now as we await Mrs. Gandhi's arrival on the platform is the, are the increasing crowds that are, are running now towards the ramparts. Now, Mrs. Gandhi is at the base of the flagstaff. The naval officer moves forward, shows her the ripcord, and Mrs. Gandhi takes hold of the ripcord, tugs once, and it unfurls. is unfurled and Mrs. Gandhi is standing bolt upright there, stands to attention as the television cameras and the cameramen take their historic pictures. And the guns boom out, a battery by the Delhi gate booms out a 31-gun salute. The naval officer is uh, trying to do something to the cord of the flag uh, under instructions from the defense minister, Mr. Chawan, who's standing up there in his waterproof wearing his Gandhi cap. And uh, Mrs. Gandhi now moves forward uh, to the battery of microphones uh, and looks out over this huge concourse of people as the Guard of Honor begins to march off. And on come the school children, uh, looking colorful, uh, though drenched, uh, greens and browns and oranges. Here come the school children and somebody's run out there. Yes, yeah, six, eight, ten servicemen have run out there with a huge uh, blue carpet. Uh, lined with scarlet, and that's been placed just at the uh, opposite end of the saluting dais. And uh, the microphones are now being pulled into position. From there, the AIR artists will uh, lead the national anthem when the tremendous crowd here is invited to join in. Now, there go the school children, and off parade go the uh, Guard of Honor, very smartly, all arms up the same height. The police now are just disappearing behind the far turret of the Red Fort. Very smart indeed, all arms up, immaculate marching. They marched on beautifully also. And uh, no less disciplined are these 1,500 school children who are beautifully dressed, salvar kameez, greens and pinks and more. I think this is definitely the uh, most uh, colorful part of the, this morning's parade, really. They seem to have been hiding somewhere because they haven't suffered very much by the drenching rain. How colorful this looks like, thousands and thousands of uh, moving jewels. And uh, there is the AIR uh, chorus moving on now, white saris and orange cholis. They seem to float there, literally float. And on the edge of the line, these 25 blind girls who came on in single file holding each other's saris from the rear and led by um, uh, their schoolmistress all lined up in very disciplined fashion on the right of the line. Now, they're all requested to sit down, and in a moment we shall be hearing Mrs. Gandhi address the nation from the ramparts of the Red Fort. 
you can hear the applause and the rustle of uh, clapping coming from below the uh, rampart as Mrs. Gandhi moves forward now to the battery of microphones. The main message of that stirring address uh, by Mrs. Indira Gandhi to our countrymen was that today the progress of India depends not on any one person, but every single person, every single individual. The road ahead is difficult, she said, but we must be fearless. And she said once again with those stirring words, arise and let's go to it. Well, the ceremony of rededication is over. And so once more, the torch is passed. We say goodbye from the ramparts of Delhi's Red Fort, fortified by what we have just heard from our Prime Minister. The days ahead will require courage and fortitude, effort and energy. But there are many quarries of courage and fortitude in our country today. Let us therefore take care of these quarries so that there will be no stained blocks to weaken the rising of the building. This is the legacy and our opportunity. This is Melville de Mello from the ramparts of the Red Fort, returning you now to the studios of All India Radio, New Delhi.